look like you're in a western out here today. A western? Yeah, it kind of looks western today. Are you saying it is western or things are going to get western? Uh, I'm saying it's looking like... Things got western already. Yeah, wow. Probably. Things got played quickly. Uh, welcome back, guys. This is uh, day number three in the antelope pod. And uh, we learned some things yesterday. Did some things. Failed at some things. Not failed. Tried some things. But we're going to go and try some more things today. Animal hunting learned a lot in the last day and a half trying to chase these things around with your bow. I think you have to get the right situation. You have to have a little luck on your side, which I always say you do in any hunting situation. You always have to have a little luck. And you have to play your cards right. But out here, the right situations are few and far because the terrain doesn't call, doesn't allow for a lot of good stocks because it's where these antelope are it's so flat with very little cover we just got to keep trying just try, try give every opportunity a chance is what i would say for antelope hunting with the boat i mean heck we were headed back to the to camp last night right before dark and the goat was right by our camp that we hadn't seen in two days and we don't know where he went though he's gone anyway we're gonna go look for some more goats to try some more situations and see what it brings us. Here we stand, sit, sit, here we sit. Um, super frustrated we have antelope all around us but there's no way we can stalk them but i have a little bit of a hill and there's a couple looks like little bucks two little bucks and some does right up on this rise we got cows in between us now but they might start feeding this way we've been stopped here for about 10 minutes and the antelope that were close but they're coming back to that water so i'm gonna go see try to make something happen maybe hopefully get within like 50 yards maybe logan's gonna stay back here and try to film it
all about just judging where they were going to be at. First time I popped up there 150 yards in front of us, which was good. We dropped back down to the bottom where they couldn't see again, came back up. I was hoping I'd pop up behind them, but closer, and they'd be faced away, because then I could get a range, and I could get at full draw, and hopefully one would turn broadside. But for whatever reason, one was turned and faced me when I popped up to get a range. And they didn't bugger, they just kind of ran, and they... I had a shot at like 70 yards, but it's a little far, further than I want to take. Been shooting a lot at 60, so I feel good there, but it was fun. It was, it was close. There was two younger bucks and a doe, but this tag is good actually for either sex, so I could shoot any of them, but I was trying to, I want to shoot a buck if possible. Um, we just got to do that a couple more times, and I think it'll work out. She got me. stock just found another true panel out but ton of does probably 30 some does and then one really nice buck there's private we got private down here these are the antelope i stalked yesterday they like to come from this public down onto the private so they're up on this knob working their way this way towards the private if we can get around this hill might have a shot of getting in front of them having them come right to us but it's i like it because we're going to be able to get close without them seeing us it just depends on what they decide to do we see them before they see us. I'm watching these antelope. That, so that big buck never did make it off the hill with that big group. We came back around, he was still up here with probably 10 other does, and now he's bedded down by himself. Or maybe one or two other does, so I'm gonna go put a stock on him. Can't just get up, did he? Nope, he's still there. And I'm gonna go right at him. the buck. He's actually kind of heading towards Casey for some reason. Come on, Case. There's the buck. There's Casey. That buck could bed down right there. That'd be awesome. Go the other way. There's Casey. There's the buck. Pretty good buck.
there he goes. Dang it. I wonder how close he was. I'll walk along, don't worry. I keep taking the key fob with me when he <laughs> goes to film, and then he makes me walk all the way back. Uh, I pushed the envelope on that one. I said I was gonna go right at him. I thought it was a good play. The problem was that all his does started working down, like feeding down, and so before I could even get into position, he'd got up, and uh, I figured I was gonna be a little closer than I was when I got on top of the same ridge he was. That's a long, wider ridge than I thought, but got to within 100, and then I was like, I'm just gonna like, still try to stay low, but just move fast to try to catch up to him, and he, they have a sixth sense, man. All of a sudden, he just caught me wide out in the open. And so I felt like maybe if I went down to my knees and like disappeared, he'd be, get curious. He got curious and ran the other way. But that was fun, 100 yards from a big goat like that. This isn't impossible, guys, I can tell you that. One of these chances are gonna work out. But that was a good situation, I thought. It looked good. Um, yeah, there was in some, I mean, it's still not like thick sagebrush. It's only like maybe 18 inches tall, but it's a lot thicker than most of this other stuff that we're finding antelope in. I just want to find them in like the three foot tall stuff. So I'm good at doing that. that. I'm not good at like <laughs> knees on the ground type stuff. My knees aren't prepared for that. On to the next one. It's pretty cool to see uh, those sage grouse. I used to hunt them with my dad as a kid and they, they were struggling then a little bit, but they really are struggling now. I'm not even sure if you can shoot them anymore in the state of Idaho. No, like I, Utah, you used to be able to draw a permit and you could go shoot one a year. Um, I think you used to be able to shoot two a year here in Idaho, but I haven't looked into it for so long because the populations haven't done well. But it's cool because the last time me and my dad were over here, we uh, flushed a lot of them. This was 15 years ago. We flushed a lot of those birds walking around, but they were pretty, pretty cool bird. They were like a prehistoric bird. If you look at their legs, they're all hairy where most birds are like skin skin type stuff they have hair all the way down to their foot and even their foot's hairy but they're a super cool bird they're they're the biggest grouse that we have in here in idaho i know that they're big giant chicken but then we have antelope too in the background it, man they just love getting into that place that you can't they just have no play on them like we spotted them when they were down by this creek and i was like i'm gonna go wade across the creek and try to get a shot and then they bumped up on the hill I think what I'm gonna do is let them go over that rise and then um, go put a stock on them. But man, this is fun. If you guys never antelope hunted with your bow, you know, especially here in the state of Idaho, you could get a tag every year and it opens before pretty much anything else does. It opens August 15th and you can go out and hunt and chase antelope all day long. Put stocks on, get better. It's, you know, what was so appealing to me about it. It's just really good practice. Plus I love antelope meat and so, Good opportunity to try to put one in the freezer if we can kill it. like the 
phrase, bow hunting's a game of inches. I think it's a lot more than that. But sometimes it comes down to like a game of inches. If that doe and the saws, I should have stayed back a little further because I think they were trying to come down this little like trail thing. But that's just so close. Especially with an animal, their eyes are incredible. It's like me with my binoculars. But on to the next one. <laughs> Banner. Banner buck. Nothing we can do. It's definitely changed since the first day we were here. There's a lot of bucks by themselves and a lot of does by themselves. Now it seems like every group of does has at least one buck with them. And they're doing ruddy buck things, like scraping the ground and rubbing their legs together and peeing. <laughs> That's ruddy buck things. Yeah, these ones aren't even worth going after because it's so bare. And as soon as you stop the truck, they take off or get out. They know the game. We're just looking for that right situation. We're headed back to camp. There's a, it's a long way back to camp. Who knows what we'll see, but we saw a buck right I had the turn off to go to camp yesterday. He was by himself, so maybe he's back. Last night here, I believe we had fajitas the first night, some amazing cheeseburgers the second night. Tonight we're finishing strong with steaks. Unfortunately, they're not antelope steaks. Fourth and 10, we have tomorrow morning. It's kind of a quick hunt. Just honestly only hunted like two and maybe a half days. We got some tenderloins. Load it up. This is a big trick of ours we always do all the time. If you're cooking steaks, it's good to pat dry them. Get like a Ziploc, throw them in a Ziploc after you season them. Throw a little bit of oil in there. Let them marinate and they're ripe for the grill. But we're just doing steaks tonight. Tomorrow morning is our last morning. And then we'll be heading home. How's that looking? Um, looking pretty good. Uh, in the words of Dora the Explorer, delicioso. So you guys know how we do it, Logan cooked around the camera, camera guy gets first bite, everyone knows the rules. Um, unfortunately this is not antelope or any wild game, this is a chunk of beef tenderloin, I yep. believe I bought, and uh, here's the thing, I like to cook, but Logan is a pretty good cook as well. I always say professor, student. Uh, he, he's getting close though. So we're gonna take one bite, tell you what we think. I can tell you right now, it feels exactly how I want it to feel. Like it's done to the perfect temperature. So we're gonna take a bite out of this corner. Hmm, oh. take a look at that. That is a perfect rare to medium rare on the medium rare side, which I love. Crisp crust. It's the secret of doing a good steak is cutting it thick. Hmm. I'm telling you what, that little Camp Chef Rainier can cook a steak. You can cook a lot of things. Man, one bite, everyone knows the rules. Steak, even though it's beef, not an antelope. I'm gonna throw it up there. No rookie scores here. Because if you give it like a 10, then there's no way like you could ever like get better than that. You always want to get better. But that's like a 8.9. Dang. It's a big score. That's Almost a huge score. Sounds like a rookie score, but Flare is perfect, temp was perfect, still bleeding, but cooked, has a crust on both sides, and the flavor is astonishing. All right, 8.9, you guys heard it. Good steak, Logie. Woohoo! What will the critters be doing today? Welcome back, guys. We're headed back out, we've got a half a day we can hunt. We gotta go home this afternoon. So we're gonna go try to put on a couple more stocks and hopefully find that one that we've been looking for and execute it. And that's about another big part of all this. You can have the right situation, you can have the luck on your side. Execution is very important. You have to do all that you can do and do your part. So hopefully all those things come together today and we kill an antelope buck and take it home with us, put it in the freezer.
great spot it looks like. Yeah, it is. We're just cruising up this new road we haven't been up. Just trying to find like a goat that's up in this higher country. Cause it'd be a little, oh, there's a whole herd of them. Anyway, to find maybe some goats that we can stalk because there's a little more topography up here. Coming up over the rise. Sure enough, there's a goat, buck, two bucks, three bucks, and there's a ground blind or a box blind set up on the the water. I don't know if anybody's in it, but there's goats literally 20 feet in front of the blind. So if there was somebody in there, they probably would be shooting by them. So here, here's a dilemma that we're in. It's not a dilemma. No. We were just cruising up this new road that we hadn't been up yet. And literally right on top, it just started to come over the top and I spotted an antelope on a water trough. So I stopped and backed up. So he couldn't see me, he never paid attention to us. So, so we turned the truck on and started watching. There was three antelope, all bucks, sitting on this water trough, like drinking and feeding around this green grass caused by the water. But I also noticed there was a like a homemade box blind right on the water as well. And I couldn't see if anybody was in it, I could just see the top of it. Uh, we assume that that box blind is set there for antelope. I don't think elk deer around here. So if somebody was sitting in it, I thought they would have shot one of the bucks. It's pretty good. Anyway, so there was another road that came around and came up the back side of the blind. I'm sure that's the way these guys come when they hunt it. And so we were like, well, if, if somebody's there, they're probably past their truck. So we got up right up to the spur road. It was only probably another 100 yards to where that blind was. And there wasn't any truck or side by side or anything like that but I was telling Logan I'm like I'm 96% sure that no one's probably in there but what if somebody came and got dropped off this morning so our plan was to come around come up this little crease where above where the antelope were and I think you could have like almost used the blind to blind you and walk in and set up and get a shot if they were still there at 30 yards but then we were like well it's really messed up if somebody's in there. Um, it's completely legal. In the state of Idaho, as far, as far as I understand their laws, you can actually sit in somebody else's blind. If they go out and set up a blind on a water hole or something and they're not in it, you can legally set it up, which I think is kind of messed up. Well, it's not messed up, it's a little weird. If you were to show up, like spend all this time in the summer, you know, setting up a blind, scouting it, and if there was a trail cam on there, um, and then you'd like say you went in to sit you're blind there's some other guys just be like oh yeah man that's legal i don't know what's your guys' thoughts my thought was i don't want to risk it. if there's somebody in there i don't want to ruin their hunt what would you do it was a pretty good setup like i think we could have got within 30 yards pretty easy and most likely gotten a shot if they were still there which they seemed really content what, what do you do in that situation let us know in the comments 100% legal. We weren't going to sit in there blind or anything. We were just going to go try to shoot the antelope off of the water hole. But what would you do in in that scenario? I said, nah, it's not worth it. I'd try to go find another buck. But let us know what you would do. Interested to hear. I'm interested to hear in your thoughts on the regulations of being able to sit in somebody else's blind or tree stand. Is the way I understand it. Well, everyone sucks to say, but we got to go home. Uh, super fun. We had a, a blast the last three days chasing these things around. They're as smart as I remember. The only thing I thought would be a little bit different it was the train would have allowed for a little better stalking conditions. Uh, where the goats were living, they definitely were living there for a reason. It was flat, they could see a long ways, and there wasn't a lot of topo or a lot of vegetation. Uh, I think they used their eyesight to their advantage, obviously. But we got close, man. Last night, it was like 40 yards tw no 20 yards from that doe with the buck right behind her if i'd have just slowed down i think if i knew would have kneeled down and let him come over that rise which i think they were going to do i could have drawn back before but who knows that close we're right in their face but uh hopefully with any chance we will be able to come back for the last three days of this hunt and uh try to get it done if not we learned a lot i think we're going to be a hunt we do every year i think uh we'll come do a little pre-scouting in the summertime know where some more water sources are and uh be a little more ready next year but it, hopefully we're back hunting for three days okay now we have to tear down to camp which i hate doing we'll see you on the next one on to the next one